Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. And we ask that in and through this service you would help us to see you, to hear your voice that we might follow. And Father, we pray now for our children and young people, for your blessing on them and their leaders, that they might learn to turn their eyes to you. Bless the Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. So if they would like to go. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Let's take a moment. The kingdom is yours, but we turn away from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. The power is yours, but we trust in our own power and strength. 
Christ, have mercy. The glory is yours, but we fall short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we worship again as his forgiven people. In a time when everything is so uncertain, isn't it wonderful that we have a God who is faithful and unchanging? Lord, we thank you that you are our rock. We thank you that you are faithful and that you are there constantly through whatever we're going through. Amen.
Gentleman's. No work too hard for him. Loving God, thank you that no work is too hard for you. That in dying for us and rising again, you have overcome death. No work is too hard for you. No work is too hard for you in our individual lives. And no work is too hard for you as you hear our prayers. Thank you. Please take your seats as Georgina comes to lead our intercessions. Let's take an attitude of prayer. Lord and Father of all mankind, we praise and thank you for the sacrifice of all those who have died in wars, both present and past. Thank you for their death so that we might live and be free. But Lord, there are still wars in our present time. You must be sad that mankind has not learned anything. Can we pray for those who have been injured through the present conflict and suffer from injuries? that they abstain from past conflicts. Lord, help and heal where needed. Give comfort and peace where minds are destroyed by dreams of what they experience. So Lord, we pray for all those Faith and love meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs from a faith 
from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord indeed will give what is good and the Lord will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares a way for his steps. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for mercy in those lands where war is, has its hold. Lord, we pray that you help the evil minds of rulers to turn their thoughts towards peace. And again, Lord, help those who currently suffer, both aggressors and those aggressed. Heal pain and injury, Lord. And again, we ask for your mercy, Lord. Father, we pray your guidance and your direction for the world leaders involved in discussions on climate change. Let us all be aware, aware of what we throw away or waste. When you look at what we throw away in our bins, Lord, it's incredible what is put into land waste. To help us to be more conscious of what we love throw away. To help us to continue to appreciate the countryside as it gives so much pleasure for so many. But thy lands in our world, Lord, where destruction has happened, Lord. Trees have been destroyed and land where mines have been destroyed. And there's wildlife, Lord, that we will lose if we don't do something. So peace be in the hearts of all those leaders in their discussions on climate change. We are aware, Lord, our weather has changed. There's some lands in our country, in our land, Lord, where snow should be at the moment, but there isn't. So, Lord, we're all aware of the change of climate. So, Lord, in your mercy. When we look today at our society compared to years ago, most of us can remember when it was so different. We appreciate progress, Lord, in technology, but, Lord, so much in our land has been lost in our society. There's no respect anymore, Lord, and so much aggression in our society. Lord, please help. Guide those in government to help in areas in our land which need, desperately need help. Lord, I've often said I feel that the food bank is such a valuable resource, but there again, in our society of the 21st century, it's really a bit of a social disgrace. So, Lord, please help our poor. Help those people who help the poor. Give them their strength. Give them their physical strength and their mental strength to help and to assist and to counsel where needed. Lord, we think of our government, Lord. We need a strong leader in our land. We pray for, the, that you, for your help and guidance for our present Prime Minister. He will be aware of conditions of so many people in our land. But they, the poor will be cared for more than they are and so much for the rich, Lord. So, Lord, our society desperately needs your help. So we pray again for guidance for our government. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we pray for continued guidance for Sarah and our ministry team. Give Sarah the strength she will need as we prepare, as she prepares for the busy season ahead of your son's birth. Keep her strong, Lord, but direct her when she needs to rest and she when she needs it. 
Just thank you for her, Lord. Thank you that you've brought her to us. She's such a blessing to us. So help her in whatever way she needs, Father. I'm just going to read two little poems. I'm called the Song of Joy. Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with a song, as we have done this morning and will do further. Know that the Lord is God. He has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Give him thanks and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. His faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Great and mighty are your deeds, Lord God Almighty, and we thank you for all the things you do for us, whether seen or unseen. We give you praise and thank you. And Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us say together now the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Georgina. Would you all please stand? And George, would you come forward, please? George, can you come forward? Would you like to turn to one of the war memorials? Let us remember before God and commend to his keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. We keep a minute's silence.
They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. On your orders of service, we come to the act of commitment, which is after the intercessions and the prayers. The responses to each line are, or we will. Let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? Will you work for a just future for all humanity? We pray together. Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage and mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. Would you please take your seats as Jill comes to bring us our reading. Thank you, Jill. The reading this morning is from Luke chapter 21, and it's the first 19 verses. 5 to 19, sorry. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name claiming I am he and the time is near, do not follow them. When you hear of wars and revolutions, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay hands on you and persecute you. They will deliver you to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. This will result in your being witness to them, but make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. All men will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. By standing firm, you will gain life. This is the word of the Lord. Let 
Let's pray. Loving God, would you take my words and speak to us those things that are for us. Wash away the words that are not of you that will not help. And we say, lead us on deeper in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is a fun passage, isn't it? <laughs> One of those passages that you think, yes, don't really want to preach on that, but hey. Today, we're taking stock, as Remembrance Sunday, taking stock of where we are. We are remembering what has gone on before. We are remembering the sacrifices that have been made for us to have the freedom that we have now. I wonder what the stories are that you have grown up with, the stories of relatives of yours who were involved in one of the wars, one of the world wars, or maybe those stories and the relatives that you know of, or you were involved yourselves, not just in the two world wars, but also in the ongoing conflicts and the conflicts more recently of Afghanistan and the Falklands. We've all been involved or witnessed wars, whether we have been actually in them or are affected by them. Those stories that we have grown up with as part of our identity form us and impact us. There will be those for whom the stories of the UK are vitally, intrinsically important. But there are also others of us here for whom the world wars and other wars have affected them in different ways, those who have come for refuge from other places, those whose families fought on other shores for freedom, those whose families are caught up in different conflicts. The experiences, the stories of war and conflict impact and affect us all. None of us want war but we know it happens. And it's important that we know the story to know where we fit. We look back that we might look forward. We look back to learn the lessons of history in the hope that as we step forward, those lessons will help us not to make the same mistakes again. We know the cost of those who are injured, of those whose lives, have, whose lives have been taken, those who are impacted by reparations, by rebuilding. And we have the reminders to fight for freedom and for what we value. As we give thanks for those who have offered everything we remember the heartache of those whose lives and family lives still bear those scars. And wars continue to impact us. We only have to look at Ukraine to know how much it impacts our lives. Woodrow Wilson's comment or hope that World War I would be the war to end all wars so sadly is not the case. It's human nature, isn't it, for us to defend what we hold dear, for us to protect our land and what we value. But it's also human nature to take a bit more, to think, well, no one will notice that bit. 
No one else needs it. They're not here at the moment. They're not saying it matters. Therefore, it's valid. We have history of conflicts throughout the generations, throughout the millennia. We fight for our identity. We fight to overcome oppression. We fight to overcome suppression. But we also fight those who are different to me or different to us. We may not know why we're fighting. That might be lost in time. But those grudges and identities still hold fast. You only have to look still at the football grudges. Liverpool and Everton, there will be many others. And then we come to this passage that we have. Jesus Jesus is with some of his disciples who are remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God. Look, look, isn't this place amazing? Isn't it beautiful? As we stand as they stood in that temple, they're celebrating the fact that the temple has been rebuilt. That after the destruction by King Nebuchadnezzar, that all these years later, It has been rebuilt. It is part of their story. This is their identity. During its long history, Jerusalem (coughs) has been destroyed twice, besieged 23 times, attacked 52 times, and captured and recaptured 44 times. They knew part of that story then. We know that more has happened since. So there they are celebrating. Isn't this fantastic? Isn't it wonderful what we've got to celebrate? Isn't it amazing? They've come back. And here they have the man that they think is going to be Messiah, who they're expecting to come and rescue them, throw the Romans out, and then again the temple will take centre stage. And Jesus says, as you are looking at this building, with all your ideas about how fantastic it is, and isn't it great that we've got our identity, and then they're aware that the Romans are there, but here they are sure to be pushed out. Jesus says, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another, every one of them will be thrown down. How many of us would be thinking, or even, or think, yes, Lord, that's a comfortable message? Of course we don't. We don't want to hear about destruction. We don't want to hear that the things that we hold dear will be taken, that they will be lost. And our challenge is when God says that these things will happen, do we say, yes, Lord? Do we say, yes, Lord, but please not in my time? Or do we say, never, Lord, please can you change your mind? Please can it be done a different way? And then they want to know when. When is this going to happen? If you know, you'll be able to take steps to avoid it. And Jesus says, when you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end won't come right away. It's so easy for us to find people or others who will say, I can make it a more comfortable journey for you. I can find a way that you will be in the in club and others will be out. 
so many different people who come and say, I will lead you. God has anointed only me, or just don't bother listening. And Jesus says again, don't be deceived, watch out. Watch out for those things that pretend or purport to be a simple way forward. Sadly, they're not. That warning to us, do not fear, don't be frightened. But it's easy for us to be afraid. If we were in Ukraine now, I'm sure that we would be frightened. That there would be things we were concerned about. God understands. But Jesus gives us the story arc to say, from that place where you are looking and recognizing the temple, know that when these things happen, which will be coming for some of them in their lifetime, God's story arc is bigger. That God knows us from creation. And God knows the end of time which is in his hands. And he says, do not fear. Don't worry. Keep your eyes on me. For each of us, we may not know or understand. We can't see the way ahead. But God knows for each one of us what is coming next. The things that will surprise you today, or surprised you last week, weren't a surprise to God. The things that are coming up in Ukraine aren't a surprise to God. The things that are coming up in our country's particular economic crisis and the crisis around the world aren't a surprise to God. He is with us. His promise is that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. And what matters is our witness. What matters is us holding on and turning to the one when we say, I don't know God, and saying, but I trust you do. You know the next steps for me. You know the next steps for each one of us. You hold us and you will help us. He says that people will be persecuted. Again, how many of us think, oh yes, Lord, please bring it on? Of course we don't. No one wants that. Jesus' disciples say, Lord, please, can't there be another way instead of you going to the cross? Sometimes sacrifice is the only way. And in those times when we don't know what to say, we have the promise that God will give us what we need. From Hebrews 12. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. When we're stuck, when we don't know, when we're wondering, when we're scared, fix our eyes on Jesus, bringing him all of our questions, all of our complaints, all of our cries of, Lord, really, this way, please, there must be another way. But thank you that you are with me. We are living in end, the end times. But we've been living in the end times since Jesus' death. And we don't know when they'll come. 
what we hold on to is that God has and holds our story. He holds our corporate story, he holds humanity's story, he holds our individual story in his hands. So what are the things that you are concerned about at the moment? So many different challenges that are faced by us individually and corporately. It may be fears around the Ukraine war. It may be fears around poverty. It may be fears around energy bills. Maybe concerns about the climate and what is coming for our generation and generations to come. Take a moment. What is on your heart? What is on your mind at the moment as a challenge? God knows the challenges that you face. He knows your fears. He knows your concerns. He knows that the coming months may not be easy. But his promise is that he is with us and that he will give us what we need. But that call too to share and to take a stand for others when they may not be able to themselves. People made different sacrifices through the wars. We may be called to make different sacrifices in these challenging times for our neighbours, for our communities. Hold on. God knows your story. He knows what's coming. Hold on. Fix your eyes on him and let him lead and guide you in your journey. We are part of his story. And as we follow his story and walk with him, that light will shine in us, bringing hope to us and bringing hope to others. Let's pray. Lord God, we are so sorry where actions of us as individuals and corporately have impacted others negatively, where we have held on for what is ours, what is mine. Soften our hearts, Lord, and strengthen us to hold on to you, knowing that you hold on to us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and worship. Lord, I come before your throne of grace. We will then have our notices and then we will have our last hymn. So please stand in a moment. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Please stand.
please take your seats. On the notices, um, there are various bits and pieces. Please do have a look. Um, Operation Christmas Child, we are collecting shoe boxes through this week, um, and particularly next Sunday, so we'll have a blessing for them then. Um, please do bring them um, through the week or next Sunday. That would be lovely. Thank you very much. We are in the process of looking at home groups and just trying to re um, encourage people into that. So that's something just to be aware of will be happening in the next few weeks. Um, please do pray for um, our schools work. We've got five schools coming in um, in the next five weeks or so for Christmas and Christingle, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, Jane in particular has done a fabulous job in keeping in touch with our schools through COVID um, and we've got lots of opportunities. So please do pray for those. Um, in addition, you, as you can imagine, well, if I say five, service, five schools coming in, um, that also means that there is going to need to be a lot of help with um, welcome and things like that, but particularly chair moving. Um, and so there are some sheets, the ones that are, have got blank bits, the white ones, um, are, if you can help, please sign up, they tell you when, and we will put a leaflet out next week, just letting people know more of the details so you can think, okay, yes, I can help then. That would be fantastic. Um, and also next Sunday evening, we are having an evening service at half six to pray and worship and just ask God what the next stages of that service should be. At quarter two, or just before, we'll be going down to do two minutes silence at the War Memorial. And now I got some bounds to publish. I publish the bounds of marriage between Samuel Setterfield and Megan Cayley Parker, both single of this parish. This is the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these two may not marry, you are to declare it now. Loving God, we pray for Samuel and Megan, for your blessing on them and their families. May they know more of your love. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our last hymn. A wonderful hymn, dear Lord and Father of mankind. Forgive our foolish ways, says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's join together in singing. Yeah. 
Lord, speak through the heat of our desires. In and through this week, would you take what we offer, help us to hold back what is not helpful, and lead us, we pray. Amen. And now may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit Hold you in his love, hold you in his peace, strengthen you to walk in ways of justice and assure you that you are held in God's story. Amen. Bless you. Thank you to everyone, to the tech team, to musicians, to reading and praying. Thank you. And we will be going down to the War Memorial in a moment or two. Thank you. <laughs>